So with the growing interest in Fusion 360 that I've seen recently, um, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to start up like a, a little video series like I do with Moto, you know, where I can share tips and tricks that I found about Fusion during my travels with it. And hopefully you'll share stuff in the comment section that you found that I haven't seen maybe, and together we can all learn something. So let's take a look. So the one question that I get from people who are just starting up with Fusion is they want to know about how can they customize the interface or more specifically hotkeys and things like that. And the main thing to remember here is that you're not in Moto anymore. <laughs> Your options are limited. Um, in the current state of the program, uh, it has hotkeys, but you can't customize them or, or set them. So. Uh, learn the ones that are there because it's useful. Like if I pull down the create menu, you know, like hole is set up the H, extrude is set up the E. They have a few hotkeys they've assigned that they feel are useful, but that's as far as you're going to be able to go. There's no pie menus or anything like that either. So uh, uh, there is one thing you can do to uh, customize your interface though, and that's uh, this toolbar up here can be customized. So let's say that I pull down the create menu. Uh, and I find myself making spheres an awful lot. Well, every command that I hover over, you see it's got this little um, a little uh, up arrow that appears over there. If I click that up arrow, that means that sphere now appears up on this uh, menu bar up here. Let's say I want to do the same thing for the pipe command, right? So now they're always up on top and they're available to me. And if I want to get rid of them, I hold down Alt and drag them off. That's about the extent of what you can do from what I've seen, but you know, uh, it's better than nothing, right? Now, in terms of the interface, there's one thing that I would definitely say is pretty critical to getting the most out of this app uh, in terms of speed, uh, and that's the S menu. Now I, now, I don't know why it's the S menu, but uh, when you hit the S menu, oh, for search, sorry, obviously, uh, the S key brings up this model toolbox that you see on the screen there. That's kind of context sensitive, like that'll pop up a different box for when you're in sketch mode as opposed to when you're in other modes. But, but the basic gist of it is that you've got these commands here that you can pin to this bar, right? And so let's say that I want to use the whole command, but I don't have a button for it. So, so if I hit S to bring this up, I start typing in whole, you can see that it's starting to uh, as I type, uh, it filters out the commands that match what I'm saying. And I'm like, oh, there's the hole command. Uh, and I could pick it from here and then I just start making holes, right? Or if I hover over this, that same arrow appears here. And if I click that, uh, it adds the hole command to my, my pop-up toolbar here. So that's how you can customize that. And I think the same rule applies if I alt drag it off. Yeah, that gets rid of it. Um, that seems like a small thing, but seriously, uh, I use this all the time. I, I hardly ever go up here to this menu. I just hit S, and if I don't have a command pinned, then I just do a quick search for it. And like, let's say I want to you know, find the pipe command. I st start typing pipe. Boom, there I'm done, and I've made a pipe, you know. So yeah, um, get, uh, get to know this little search box that pops up because it is super useful and will speed you up quite a bit. A quick tip for the, um, well, the move tool and the push pull tool, and a bunch of them uh, all respect this uh, behavior, but uh, one thing you typically want to do is you want to line things up with other things. So let's say that I you know, have this face selected and I hit Q to turn on the push pull, the push pull tool, you know, and I'm dragging it and I want to line it up with this top face, but that's difficult by eyeballing it. But with this movement widget, uh, whenever you see this arrow, uh, if you click it and drag it a little bit, now it's sort of live uh, and then I can hover over stuff. So if I hover over this top face and click now, you know, it's going to snap that up to line up to that. And it's just a super easy way of lining things up that you know, need to be lined up. So if I make another, uh, like a new cylinder down here, and we'll grab that, pull it out to there and say, I want to do a cut up here to the bottom of this. So I just start dragging up in this arrow to make it live, click there, and then that hole that I created is directly aligned with the bottom of that cylinder. 
uh, that can help out for a lot of stuff. So, so you've heard me mention the whole tool a couple of times, and I figured we should just talk about it directly for a second, because it is super handy. Like traditionally, let's say you're making a hole for a uh, screw thread or whatever, you'd, you'd either make a sketch that's a circle and pull it through or make a cylinder and kind of stick it inside the shape and do a Boolean, but the whole tool is there to uh, accelerate that. So if I hit H, which is the default hotkey for hole, and click on the surface I want to make the hole in, uh, this nice set of widgets appears where I can control the depth and I can control the size of the countersink you know, and, and the width of the hole and drag it around and do everything I need to do with it and, and hit OK and there's my hole. And that's just a, you know, it's just a really quick and accelerated way to make a hole. And you don't have to make a, you know, a countersunk hole. So if I say H and come over here and say, no, just give me a simple hole where I can just say, all right, I want it to be that wide and that deep and okay. And then I want to make another hole inside of there, which is maybe offset a bit to that side. Okay. And make another hole on that same surface, maybe kind of half intersecting that one. But this goes down a bit further and say okay as you can see how quickly you can bore into surfaces and make you know those cool round shapes you might want okay so real quick i wanted to talk about the patterning tool patterning infusion is kind of the equivalent in other modeling packages of of duplicating or cloning with kind of a hybrid of, of instancing, which we'll see here in a second, uh, as a result of the history timeline. So if I go into, I think patterning is on the modify menu or create menu, sorry, pattern. Um, you have a couple different options. You can, uh, you can pattern in rectangular patterns or straight lines or specific paths or circles or whatever you need to do, right? Uh, we'll just pick rectangular for now. Now, the way that I'm going to use this here is I'm going to select these faces here because this is what I want to pattern uh, across this surface. So then I have to pick my direction, which will be my X axis, and I'll just drag this out and say, OK, and now I've got these holes sitting out here. Now, where patterning uh, is really cool, well, sorry, where the history timeline is cool is let's say I grab this thing here and I activate the push or the offset faces tool. You know, I keep calling it push, the push pull because of SketchUp. I think it's, it's like stuck in this uh, crevice in my head. But the offset faces tool. So if I push this face up and down, you can see, you know, uh, you know I'm only affecting that one. Uh, but if I go back to the original and offset this face, now they're all updating to match that one. And that's simply because of how the history timeline works. So I've got that face selected and you can see in the history timeline, it, uh, the little squiggle appears on this step here, which is when I first created that hole. Then moving down the history pipeline, you see that I've got a uh, offset faces and I've got a, a rectangular pattern copy and all that. So these are effectively, uh, these two holes over here are effectively uh, an instance of this hole. So any changes I make here, you know, uh, you know including punching it through, well, it gets a little angry about that. You can break things down the line, but just, you know, it's just nice to have this capability to be able to adjust things on mass like that. And that's really all there is to show with the patterning tool. I just wanted to, you know, to expose you to the instancing type behavior that it has. So I wanted to show how the how Fusion allows you to, to delete things on the fly uh, and it will heal itself, which is very handy when you get, you know, let's say you've gotten ahead of yourself. Hypothetically, this would never happen to anybody, but let's say you got overexcited with the model and you went and added a bunch of fillets uh, too soon in the process. And you're like, man, this would be a lot easier to work with if I didn't have these filleted edges. Well, what you can do is if you select the entire fillet uh, on an edge and hit delete, You'll see that Fusion will delete that and heal the mesh again, which is super handy for getting rid of stuff. You don't have to go back in the history timeline and unselect them. I mean, you can do that, certainly. 
Okay, let's see where this is. Uh, this is this fillet. So if I go in here and hold the control key, I can obviously modify this fillet by turning off those edges and things, you know, and fix it that way. Or I could just delete the fillet uh, straight up and Fusion will fix it for me. Now by that same token, uh, you can modify fillets that already exist and chamfers and other things uh, by using the offset faces tool. Now this is not the most straightforward thing in the world and you kind of have to play with it. But let's say, let's say that I didn't like this size chamfer here anymore, or this size, yeah, chamfer. So if I activate the push pull tool, <laughs> the offset faces tool, uh, I can drag this now and change the size of that. And it's happy. You know, it's happy to let me do that. And I can also do that with filleting. Let's say that I select this fillet here, offset faces, and I can go ahead and adjust that fillet. Now you'll notice the other corner uh, is also updating. And it's because uh, when you're doing that, you're modifying not just the face you selected, but every, sorry, not just the fillet you selected, but all the fillets that got done at that same spot in the timeline. That can get a little weird, but uh, once you understand what's going on, it, you know, it's fine. Because I don't think Fusion has the ability yet to do, um, or or I know it doesn't have the ability to do variable fillets, like you know, uh, ones that get fatter in the middle and stuff. I'm sure it's coming, but it's not here yet. So. Uh, for now, you're editing fillet operations as a, you know, as a whole. So, and finally, uh, I wanted to go over the movement widget. I've had a few requests that I wanted to know how, you know, how to control it better because it doesn't behave like, like, like what you're used to in modeling applications like Modo or Max. Well, it sort of does, but it's, it's definitely weird. So, let's say I activate it with the M key. Uh, first thing it wants to know is what body to move. So let's say I hover over this one here. Now when you hover over a body, you have these anchor points you can click on. And the widget will snap to those anchor points and use the orientation of that anchor point as the movement axis. So if I click, let's say, uh, right on this edge here, that's where the widget appears and it's oriented right there. And I can drag this over, you know, to get as close to that as I want to. But there's a better way. Like, uh, let's say I wanted to snap those together. You know, all I would do is begin dragging, then cursor over here and click on that face. And that'll just move that over to match up. And, and, you know, and we saw that back in the other video, you know, as well, the move, you know, the moving snap to stuff. Um, that applies with, the, you know, with this as well. So let's say that I pre-select a body and hit move. Now the widget snaps right here by itself, right? That's what happens. That was the difference, right? If I hit the movement key and cursor over, I can pick where I want this to sit. Uh, but if I pre-select a face on a body and hit the movement tool, uh, it defaults the, uh, the widget to the click spot, I think and takes on the orientation of the world, which is not often what you want. Like if I want to move this thing through its local axis, that's just not going to work out well. So the way to fix that uh, is to over on this dialog, hit this button here, the set pivot, turning that on uh, gives you those same handles back again, where you can click on where you want this to be oriented. So if you pick an edge facing in the correct direction and click it, now that's your movement. Uh, that'll be your movement access. And there's a weird, or in my opinion, a weird UI thing here. You have to go over here and turn that off again. Uh, if you leave that on, you're just going to move the widget or move the origin again. So turning that off, now we can move this uh, through its local space. And that works the same with rotation or anything else. You know, rotations in local space, movements in local space. So the, uh, the last thing to deal with the movement widget is there's a feature called point to point. So if I pick this body and I click this button here, I can click this and say, okay, this point, so I click that, we'll snap to this point and click that. 
that's perhaps the fastest way to move things around because I could I could just keep jumping around the scene and saying okay now move this point to here or you know oh I think I have to close down the movement uh, the movement window all right picking this then point to point I can say go from here to here that's something else to get used to is the dropping uh, the dropping of tools when you don't need them anymore because yeah, sometimes the effects are cumulative uh, if that's how you pronounce that uh, they stack basically so anyway uh, that's some basics on the movement widget uh, if there's something else you want to know about that let me know but i think that covers the basics the rest of it's just trial and error and and play around so i'll see you next time